My name is Gary Verwer. I'm 76 years old and I have 10 grandchildren. I had a triple bypass in 1988. I recovered very rapidly, but about six months ago, I started to notice that things were slowing down. How I really knew I was in trouble was the distance from our bedroom to our bathroom is probably 30 feet. I could not walk there without having to stop and rest. And when it starts affecting you that way, and then you know, I knew, I had a real problem. Mr. Verwer had some classic symptoms of heart failure that can happen when the aortic valve becomes more narrowed or aortic stenosis. Those being shortness of breath, feeling fatigue, some patients get swelling in their legs, chest discomfort, and some will actually pass out because of inadequate blood flow to their brain due to the, the narrowed valve. Severe aortic stenosis is a calcific process where the aortic valve becomes narrowed and obstructed by calcific deposits. As it gets tighter and tighter, the heart is working harder and harder, generating higher pressures to pump the blood to the body. So the heart's working very hard and you want to relieve that overload with a new valve. I had met with the cardiologist and he had told me that my valve was getting progressively narrower. And at some point in time, we had to start talking about doing something. But I was deemed inoperable because in the 88 bypass, technology at that time was to take the mammary artery and run it behind the breastbone. And now when they saw through a breastbone, they'd saw right through that artery. In order to do uh, the gold standard treatment for aortic stenosis, open surgical valve replacement, you need to make an incision in the sternum and divide that. And if the bypass is running right under the sternum, that can be quite challenging and risky. And so for that reason, we offered a less invasive approach to transcatheter aortic valve replacement. The new procedure, what we call transcatheter aortic valve implantation, is put this valve on a little catheter. So we will crimp this valve down from about an inch and a quarter to about six millimeters, and then insert that catheter through the leg or through the chest and position it into the old valve while the heart is still beating, and open up the valve with a balloon, and then the valve will basically stick into the old valve and allow the heart now to pump blood through this new valve, just like new. It's really an incredible new technique. It's gonna offer so much for patients who really had no other treatment option. And I think the thing that's really gratifying is that we've really advanced the field in aortic stenosis with a team approach. The cardiologists and the cardiac surgeons are really working together to advance this field. So this will really offer these individuals who had no other choice now a treatment option to prolong their life. It's amazing what air and blood does. When it gets to your brain, oh my gosh, you're like a whole different person. And as soon as the valve's on, he got both. Had this happened eight years ago, 10 years ago, um, he wouldn't have had an option. Basically speaking, I feel I can do anything I want. And uh, just, yeah, got a positive outlook on life again. It is a major medical paradigm shift. The only thing that rivals this in terms of the, its powerful impact on patients is heart transplantation in 1968. So we see this as a major uh, step forward. There's still a lot to be learned, but it's, we can offer patients something we never could before, and that's pretty exciting. I feel alive again. I really have kind of two basic goals right now. One is to dance with my granddaughter at her wedding. And the second one was to uh, play golf again. And my feeling is that now I can do both.